came from England. I got here on time. Hungry? So, all the way down here to Margaret River. Awesome. What do you get if you mix a rock star farmer with a skateboarding chef? You get a road trip, adventure, and recipes that rock. We're having a bit of a party. So we're checking out the best of the best. I don't know anyone who doesn't like chocolate. OK, guys, before I can show you how we make chocolate, yeah, I've got to put these on. Sure. Thank you very much. The smell in here, it's like walking into a mug of uh, cocoa. <laughs> You'll keep me. Thank you. So that's dried cocoa pot. I didn't know that was so big. So to get the beans out of it... Pretty hardcore, isn't it? You just hack them open, and out comes the beans. Bit of an instrument. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, I'll show you now how we oh, wow. grind our oh, oh, beans look down. Look at that. It's like Willy Wonka. A lot of people think we've put water in there. What it is, it's the, the oils or the cocoa butter yeah. that, that's melting. That is very sexy. So this is where the messiness of chocolate comes in. <laughs> so normally by the end of a grind, the room's covered in chocolate. <laughs> so thick. Oh, look at that, yeah. So very thick. Goopy. Oh, wow. <laughs> But you can see it's very bitter. <laughs> like it's sucking really... the moisture out of my mouth. Exactly. Mm. Oh, wow. It's like eating mud. <laughs> I'm not going to eat a lot of that by no, itself. No, that, that, that little bit was enough, but... Now we're in business. Now we're in business. Now we can actually make chocolate. OK. So that's a, a Madagascan milk chocolate. Have a taste of that. And... Oh. It's improved tenfold. What's been added? Cocoa liquor. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll put a little bit of extra cocoa butter in there. Uh, sugar. And uh, vanilla. Oh, that's bliss. OK, guys, this is our playroom where we oh, wow. <laughs> finish off our chocolate. Hi, right, Hey, Ruth. How are you going? Right, Alex. Would you like to come and have a play here? I mean, yeah. What have we got? Have we got snakes? We've got snakes. <laughs> Flowers. We do bog frogs as well. Truffle salt? Truffle, Truffle salt, salt and salt. rosemary. Yeah, that's a nice. Strawberry, pistachio and rose. Yep. You can pour your own while he's going there. Put it down the whole time. Yeah. Next one. Yeah. Chocolate oh. to your close. And then take it oh. off. There we go. And this, sh this shakes it all down and shakes it flat. Well, that happens quickly, doesn't it? It does. This is a bad for an <laughs> There you go. So it's quite sweet, so it'll take quite a lot of salt, probably, won't it? Um, yeah. Oh, the crunch of the salt. It's really lovely. fantastic, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's really knockout. delicious, isn't it? Oh. You're winning over there, mate? Well, I thought I was until I saw what you're doing over there. <laughs> wow, it's like a Jackson Pollock. A <laughs> Jackson <That> Pollock? <laughs> what do you reckon, mate? You have trouble. That's, that's brilliant. You can have a job here any time. <laughs> it's so delightful coming around, coming around with you, Gabrielle, because you obviously really enjoy it. But you haven't always been a, a chocolate maker. No, no, I used to be a lawyer. <laughs> a lawyer? Really? Yes. What kind of law? Uh, commercial law. It's quite different, but uh, all our customers are happy. <laughs> we don't get too many unhappy guys. <laughs> what we got, Chef? Pudding time, mate. Pudding time? Best yeah. bit, mate. It's a really, really easy liquid centre chocolate cake. Mm. So, you know the one where it's yeah. sort of cakey, you break it in the middle, oozes out, just with a little bit of custard. So, I'm going to get you to line the moulds for me, mate. You got it. So mm -hmm. I've just put a little bit of oil in there yep. so they'll stick, so you can kick on with that for me, and I'll start making this pudding. So, we've got the chocolate from Gabrielle's. Nice. Put that straight into the double boiler. A couple of inches of water in there, boiling away. <clears throat> While we're using the double boiler, you can put it in a pan and melt it or in the microwave, but it's just a really gentle way to do it, and you're not going to burn the chocolate. Right. We've got five egg yolks, caster sugar, five whole eggs. So we just get these beating on a sort of... not. You don't want to put it too high straight away, because you'll have eggs and stuff flying everywhere. Turn the speed up gradually as you, as you go. And so we just keep stirring this chocolate around just so, just so it melts nice and evenly. So with the, um, the butter, we've got equal parts butter and chocolate. So okay. it's, really, it's a really healthy pudding. 
<laughs> and we're going to add egg yolks to that. And we're going to add a heap of eggs and a bit of sugar. The butter's made it really runny, hasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Got that lovely shine to it now. So they say chocolate's a substitute for something, Alex. Do you know what that is, mate? Yeah, I prefer sex, <laughs> Okay, so that's all melted through now. So in a couple of batches, we just want to pour that on, probably, say, four goes. And we just want to fold the chocolate onto it. So by scooping under and just sort of flipping it over, turning the bowl as you go. Ooh. Actually, that isn't a substitute for sex. That is sex. <laughs> so it's just got um, 50 grams of flour. So it's just a very little bit of flour, just to um, give it a bit of stability when it cooks. Right, and then we're just going to pour this into the moulds. We will get a bit of rise out of this, so we'll go about sort of just over halfway. Oops, try not to get it over there. She's done a pretty good job lining these, mate, but I'm sort of mucking it up now. And this is another thing about pastry work. It just gets so dirty. Dirty work, but someone's got to do it. All right, mate, you can have a bit of mousse. I'm going to put these mm. in the freezer, and we're going to make a bit of custard. I, I think that's far sexier than a macaroon. Much better. Just like a mucky bowl of gloop. <laughs> <laughs> Macaroons have become like a global phenomenon. They're here as well. Hipster, These little hipster ditty, coffee dessert, isn't it? Green and pink, like girl. They're like, so sweet. It's just... Yeah, they're, they're for four year old girls, basically. <laughs> I think. I'm not really sure about cupcakes either. <laughs> All right, mate, so to serve with this chocolate pudding, really easy custard. Custard! Oh! <laughs> uh, a whole generation of uh, British uh, people were completely put off custard by school lunches, and it oh. was just. Horrible, glutinous, gloopy. <laughs> it took me years to recover. Oh, no, no, this is going to be better than that, I hope. So it's not bringing back horrible childhood memories for uh -uh. you, mate? No, this is a totally different beastie. Oh, could have been so different. All right, mate, so the chocolate cakes are frozen, the custard's ready. I reckon we get them in the oven. 180 degrees, 15 minutes. So there, oh, you could grab that custard for me. Looking good. Saucy. All right, so let's see if we can get one of these puddings out. Eureka. Just take this mould over the top. So it's a sort of reverse sandcastle. Yeah. But look at that. You can tell it's a, it just wants to explode. And all yeah, the... so we've got nice cakiness, but we've got a lovely liquid centre. Bit of pure cocoa powder, nice and bitter. Oh, and the colours are lovely. Bit of orange zest, got our chewy berries. And that's it, man. If you'd like to do the honours. Well, I reckon I can revisit custards. Now's the time. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> and you get that lovely fragrance from the mm. orange. Oh, it does. Go on, you carve. All right, all right. So here we go. Oh. So it's nice and cakey. We've got a lovely runny centre. I think I'm going to beat you to it here, mate. Thank you very much. Oh, so you got to make sure you get a bit of everything. Mmm. 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 Oh. So easy to make. You can make them in bulk, leave them in the freezer, whack them in the oven when guests come around. It's a keeper. Truffles are pretty rare, even in Europe where they come from. But with 27,000 trees producing truffles, they're not that rare around here. G'day, Al. Hey, you going, mate? Good day, no see. Been a while. How are you, mate? Good. Oh, this is Alex. Hey, Al. How are you going, All right, mate? mate. Nice. Oh, you come to get some truffle, eh? We have, mate. Oh, look, we should be able to find some. Yeah? I've yeah. got to say, I'm pretty excited, Al. Oh, yeah, well, they're Randy. Gourmet gold truffles. Let me give you a bit of bloody thing. These are some of the most expensive things. Uh, third most expensive food in the world. After caviar and... And the white truffle. The white truffle, OK. What kind of trees are these, Al? These are the hazelnuts here. We've got oaks scattered amongst them. And, so... it, really, and it really works, because a lot of people have tried it in Britain. I planted oh. three, absolutely useless. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it works. This, this orchard is produced on an average four or five hundred kilos a year off five acres. And the good thing is the quality level of it, acceptance of the quality has been phenomenal. You don't get compliments from French and I did. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. It's because it is quite scientific, isn't it? You take you take a, a, a standard ish hazelnut tree yep. and then and then what do you got to do? You so inoculate you it. You put the spores on the roots. Quite fiddly business. Ah oh, it's a, there's a technique to it. We were lucky we cracked it fairly quickly. 
Right, so these days, Ben's doing all the hard work? Getting oh, well, he's, he's carrying me a bit at the moment. Yeah, no, no, he's getting trained. Uh, How well. many acres of orchards you got, Ben? In this older part of our orchard, we've got up to 3,300 trees. Have you got, like, one tree that's, like, your best tree that gives you them every year and some give you none, or is it just...? You start to try and work that out, you drive yourself nuts. <laughs> some of these trees will produce a truckload one year, next year they'll only have a light amount. What's the challenge is getting the soil right? The high challenge is growing the trees, getting everything in balance. And so, Al, when you had the idea to start growing truffles, did people call you crazy? Oh, yeah, they still do. They still do? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. don't you want to keep it a bit quiet? Because, I mean, people, it'd be quite easy to just nip in here and dig a few up, wouldn't it? Why, oh, you're going to give me shooting practice? <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> do you remember finding the, the, oh, the yeah. first one? Yeah, yeah, I remember finding I know what tree it is. I just sat there and went, you freaking beauty. I've sat on this hill for a long time wondering what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I can't think of anything more brilliant than growing truffles. <laughs> How big's your checkbook? <laughs> <laughs> so you've trained your dog Latte yep. to find these truffles. Yep. And you're telling me there's truffles growing under these trees. Yeah, there we are. You've got to say I find it quite hard to believe. Latte, where's the truffle? Come on. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> Where is it? Find it. Where is it? Where is it? You're joking. Good boy. Good boy. You are joking. There's one just there. You're joking. <laughs> Good boy. Black gold. Right there. Yeah. It's a whopper. Yeah. It's like 50 quid. <laughs> or a delicious dinner. Oh, it smells amazing. Even with covered in earth. Good one. What do you reckon, Ben? No, that's pretty good, eh? Yeah? That's really good. <laughs> well done, Latte. And so does Latte get a treat every one he points? Yeah, yeah, just a treat. Yeah. It's lucky he doesn't know how much they cost or we'd, be, we'd have unions on our ass. So. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Hey, hey! Wow, look at that. Fire up. G'day. Nice. G'day. Guys, how are you? Good, I'm Matt. Matt, how are you? Good. Alex, we need a platter. We're in the market yeah. for a platter. Yeah. I like this, this shape. That's awesome. I love that pattern yeah. as well. That's a cracked earth series. Beautiful texture. Cracked yeah. to the desert in that one. And from different angles, different light it catches, and that's great. Let's just blow some glass. Blow some glass. Now, I don't have to tell a couple of guys who work in kitchens that watch out for hot surfaces. We'll put some on this lovely red. Alex, put your hands on my hand here. We'll feel yeah. how we're rolling this here. Oh. We're just giving that a little roll and it's picking up some of the colour. It's like getting hundreds and thousands on a lolly. Amazing texture. And there's what happens when I stop turning it. Don't stop. That's what I say. So that's getting strength as it cools. Have you had some pretty serious burns in there? Well, once is enough for most glass makers usually. It's a bad burn. I can imagine. But uh, hey, uh, I think I've had worse burns in the kitchen. Yeah. And I'm not usually having a drink when I'm making glass. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you got your safety boots, man. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm just squirming that around while it's hot. Yeah, it's like icing a cake, isn't it? Yeah. So now we're going to fracture the surface of the glass. Whoa! Literally cracking it. Awesome. It's like a dragon's Which egg. One? Brilliant. So, <laughs> Alex, yes. can we assume the position? Blow, don't Thank suck. You. Blow, don't suck. Just gently, like you were blowing out a couple of birthday candles. Blow. I can feel it enlarging. It's getting bigger. Let me turn it, you big strong boy. That's it. <laughs> Stop. OK. It got bigger. Yeah, it sure did. Yeah, Alex, gives another little puff on it. Oh, Matt, do you want yeah, a yeah, puff? Yeah. You haven't had a puff. Oh, yeah. Go and have a puff. <laughs> A bit harder this time than he did because it's colder. And stop. We're going to make a little pedestal. Uh, on she goes. That's actually cool in the glass, believe it or not. The flame cools the glass? Pretty much. It smells oh. lovely. Yeah, that's a Jarrah floorboard. If you ever come to our place, watch out in the hallway. <laughs> now, how do we get it off this blowing pipe? Back like that. There you go. Hey! All right. Whoa. Alright. Look at that. There it goes. 
So there's that plate. Wow. Nice and smooth on the inside. There's our design work on the outside. That's perfect. We'll give this a little flash of heat. How wide is this kiln? Wide enough so I can make plates. <laughs> That's mental. I'm tripping out looking at that. Hey! Ta-da! So we see that tomorrow morning. That's got a temper for three or four hours at least. See you in the morning. Thanks, mate. Right? Absolutely amazing. Oh, that's thanks, you, thanks for your help. Right. Couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Let's go turn these cray tails, mate. Generous lashings of truffle. Hey, hey, that rocks. So I was having a coffee at Lewin on Sunday and the crew were all getting quite excited because I was standing next to the bass player from a band called The Kibosh. Oh, wow. Have you heard of them? I have, yeah. So anyway, we get chatting and he's now a potato farmer. So I was like, well, you've got what to come... What is it with bass players becoming farmers? I don't well, know. anyway, he's, he's, he's going to come and uh, show us his, his, his wares. He's going to be here any minute. So that's... Uh, Great. ...quite exciting. Cool. Come in, Dave. Hey, guys. Wow. Nice. Thanks for coming. Um, we're both bass players who grow potatoes. Um, personally, the bass playing's going fine, but the potatoes were a bit of a disaster for me this summer. So it's really lovely to see these uh, healthy-looking That's the thing about spuds. You put something that's good in the dirt and everything wants to eat it. Every bug, every worm. What have we got here? Well, you've got Maris Piper there, mate. And they're a great roasting variety that can also be fried. They've got a great fluffy texture. And something like a kipper is a super, super waxy. It's my favourite potato kipper. They're good fun. They're buggers to grow, but they're great fun to eat. And you're going to love the Cuscos or the Purple Congos, because they're purple and Look purple at all the way through. Wow. You're going to cook something nice? Mate, I'm going to do a flash potato salad. Great stuff. Truffles, bacon, crayfish, kipper potatoes. All right, I'm going to get out of here before somebody makes me wash them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm going to get this, uh, this pan on. Just going to throw this bacon in. Bass players, nice blokes. <laughs> Watch your back, sir, mate. Just gonna strain these. These potatoes have just a uh, bit of water, generous amount of salt, and we've just um, cooked them till we can just put a uh, something through them really easily, so it's nice and soft. You got it. Straight back out. Boiling them in the French style hole. Yeah, in the French way. Yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna take this cray and take that out. We'll use that for something later. Just whack him on the sink for me, mate. Hello. No, I can't talk now. I'm on the telly. <laughs> Bacon straight in. We're going to leave that pan. Just going to split this cray tail. Beautiful big crayfish. Potatoes don't really have a very sort of decadent reputation, do they? But we're definitely taking them up market here. Exactly. Yeah, we are. So we're going to fry this crayfish in the fat of the bacon. We're just you know, keeping mm. all those flavours happening. So, Matt, do you want to start chopping these spuds for me? You got it. I'm just going to turn these cray tails, mate. Got a nice little caramelisation there. So, we've got the truffle from Mr. Blakers. Oh, that's the stuff. So, generous lashings of truffle. How good does that truffle smell? Yeah, as it hits that hot bacon, it just goes bang, comes to life. I'll just check it's all right. Yes, please. That'll be good, mate. Mm. They are the best tasting black truffles I've ever had. Yeah? They're quite, they tend to be quite woody, the French ones. These are really... It's really fragrant and lovely. Mm. OK, so we're going to use a few little soft herbs as well. Just a little bit of dill. Just some chives. And a bit of uh, flat leaf parsley, which we're just going to tear up. OK, mate, they can go straight in. You got it. Bit of fat in there as well. Bacon fat's the bomb. Mm. So this cray, we're just going to pull it all out. As you can see, it's still quite opaque. We've only just sort of mm. seared it. But everything's warm in here. The residual heat will carry on the cooking, so don't be, don't be fussed that that's not quite done yet. OK, and then we're just going to run the knife through this cray. That is a world of delights, mate. Nice little lug of olive oil. The smell that's coming off that is all kinds of wonderful. Nice hit of sea salt. We're going to take uh, the plate. Yeah, I think jerry. this is the one that's worthy of the plate. OK, so we're just going to get our hands in, massage all these flavours together. But oh, mate. Have a smell. Oh, I can smell it from here. <laughs> Straight on your plate. Bacon, truffles, crayfish and the nicest looking spuds I've ever seen. Well, mate, it's, it's a hot dish. It was a hot day when we made the plate. <laughs> <laughs> and we've just got a few nice little fluffy bits from the garden, so we're just going to just dress these over the top. Got a few little flowers in there and some, some citrus leaves. Oh, mate, that is a picture. It's a kind of a picture that needs 
tasting. <laughs> that is an amazing bouquet. Oh, it's so creamy, those spuds. Mm, they're beautiful. Aren't they good? Aren't they I think good? With, even with all these flash ingredients, I think the spuds are still the real hero of this dish. Mm, that rocks. So as soon as I saw those delicious potatoes, I thought, hmm, Spudsworth, let's have it. Spudsworth? Yeah, man. It's, uh, now I've done You're quite... excited. You're excited uh, yeah, about well, potato, aren't you? Now, cheese behaves very well in microwaves, uh, and actually... Where does it misbehave? Yeah, it's, it's, it's always good, I think, cheese. <laughs> really, you want three different cheeses for the ultimate microwavable pouring cheese. Oh, right on. You need something for taste, so mature cheddar's good. Then you want something for unctuousness, something that's going to give it a nice ooey, gooey. gooey kind of feel. And actually something with high acidity is good because acidity is what makes cheese go stringy. This is just like what cheese we had in the fridge. Let's just mix it up in there and see what happens. That's enough to give you a heart attack, that's fine. So let's put that in the microwave for like, I don't know, it doesn't take long. 40 seconds, I reckon, for that. Right. Spud. Oh, oh. Hot, hot. That's it, and then you just sort of sit it, push it up to beg like that. Beg for cheese, baby. <laughs> Only thing we might need is a bit of pepper, maybe a bit of parsley. They're lovely, those, aren't they? They're great, yeah. Where did they come from? We found them at the market. Oh, yeah, there's stuff happening in here. <laughs> Oh, wow. Right. Ooey gooey. That. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's not a disaster with two old bits of cheese out of the fridge. It's a pretty good potato, though. Bit of pepper. Parsley. <laughs> <laughs> Looks almost good enough to eat. Get it when it's about at the top, then just let it go. Don't okay. try too hard. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going over till I've caught a fish. You know what? This'll do. It'll do. 